you have $50,000 available. You can put all of that in your safe or you can put it toward other things, whatever you want. What do you do? And I should probably say, before you get too excited, you're gonna have to come up with that hypothetical cash on your own because mine is all tapped out. The question of what you should have in your safe came up on Reddit. Things people share online. Uh, yeah, I get it. We share too much. And this is a strange launch point for a video, but I think it's interesting. It's interesting because that person only had three things. Now, I have thoughts. Not all of them are constructive, but it put a hook in me. And we're going to mix this up a little bit first, cover what's going on with gold price right now, because I think that helps build a certain case for what I would say would be my approach. So we have the price of gold running again, and who cares about price fluctuations, right? Well, I do. I'm a buyer rather than a seller, so I don't like paying more for gold. But that feeling aside, gold is doing a great job outperforming sidelined cash. So mixed feelings. And we're going to take a look at why it's going up, and then let's get back to why any of that matters. Before we get back to it, if you're looking for precious metals, hit up SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for spot. That's sdbullion.com slash new. So I mentioned in my last video that any official data showing normalization is going to send the price of gold up. Now, we might not agree that anything out there is normal, but the Fed uses specific signals to make their decisions. So what we think should be happening really doesn't matter. It's not going to be what actually affects gold price. What we're looking at right now is more a matter of what traders think the Fed is going to do. Now, all that's just something we had to cover. The price of gold pushed above 2080 as I'm recording this, and that is not nothing. This week's data looked pretty normal, so within Wall Street expectations. January's U.S. inflation data was tame. Chinese PMI was at least better than a dumpster fire, and even the Eurozone inflation fell in January as well. So gold price is trending back up. Another thing that I mentioned in my last video is that other markets are on a run as well. And again, this has nothing to do with feelings on where things should be. It's just data. It's looking at actual performance. It's a fact. Now, what I've been seeing in the comments section is a comparison between those other markets and gold. Now, this is a tiny percentage of the comments, but people are in there. They're saying, sell your gold, buy whatever, buy Bitcoin. Now look, I'm a capitalist. I'm not really going to argue against any of that. If you want to sell your gold to speculate on another market, we'll knock yourself out. But personally, I don't lock up investment capital in gold. I wouldn't have to sell my gold in order to invest. But I get it. I see where people are coming from. But to me, gold is savings. Savings that actually appreciates. And on top of the price appreciation that I just touched on a minute ago, there are other reasons to hold gold. So one of the ideas that's just under the surface of polite conversation is an idea that certain things could go wrong. The power grid could go down. That's a big one that comes up a lot. But let's get more imaginative than that. Your online banking provider could get hacked. Look what's happening with United Healthcare right now. It's not impossible. So all of your electronic dollars could be inaccessible. Let's just say temporarily because it doesn't take much to mess with most people's daily routines. So that's a case for having cash, but cash doesn't appreciate it, it actually depreciates. So what good does gold do if the banks are down, maybe you're asking? Well, it depends. Is it just your bank or is it everybody's bank? If it's just my bank or just my account, well, I can use gold without missing a step. I can just sell to the local shop, walk out with cash. Now, if it's the whole world, all right, well, things are going to be interesting. We have other questions to figure out. So this idea that you're either buying gold or you're investing, it's not really a position that makes any sense to me. Everybody decides their allocations, but nobody is forced to choose one or the other. Now back to the guy on Reddit. Well, he had posted the inside of his safe and it was clearly posed, but it was a stack of $100 bills, a Rolex, and a handgun. The OP asked what else should be in it. And my first thought, of course, was why are you posting this on the internet? But my second thought was that hey, maybe you should have some gold in there. Now, to me, cash and gold are a lot more similar. So the case of how much gold to have is going to affect how much cash I'd have on hand. Those are both savings models. And for me, savings models for rainy days. Now, if I'm making the decision to have a bunch of sidelined cash in a safe, I'm personally going to take some of that. I'm going to buy some gold. 
because I know from historical charts that gold has clearly outperformed cash over time. Well, what if you need to get at that cash and you know, all you have is gold? Well, selling gold, it's relatively easy as long as you're buying the absolute most popular types. Let me get a maple leaf in here because it looks pretty. Now, I can take these buffaloes. I can take this maple leaf. I can take these eagles to a local shop. I can trade them for cash. And I can tell you what I'm going to get within about a 1% accuracy. So that's before talking to the shop owner. I know what I'll be able to get for these and I know what it'll take. The buy to sell spread, so the premium loss, is about 2 to 4%. So let's call it 3%. I pay 5% premium, I sell it for 2% over, that's a 3% spread. Now, as long as I've held the gold long enough for it to appreciate 3%, I'm ahead. Well, in the last week, it's done that. Last year, gold appreciated 14%. So overall, I'm doing better with gold than I would be doing with just a bunch of cash. So you can look at gold as speculation if you want, Bitcoin or gold, S&P and gold, but I don't. I think I've covered that by now. So I have those things. I also have savings. My savings is mostly cash and gold, and those are the kinds of things that would go in a safe. Now, I think this has all been too easy. I feel like we need to add a little bit of conflict here. So another angle on all of this would be using gold directly, like paying for something with gold, bartering, if you like that word, I don't see a lot of use cases where that makes sense, at least not if we're being realistic. Now, some of you do. Okay, so take a step back. Why would using gold be better than using cash in the first place? Well, it's just a simple case of using an appreciating asset rather than one that's depreciating. So while they're sitting in your safe waiting to be used, the value of the gold is going up, the value of the cash is going down. So got it. But what are these cases of wanting to use cash over modern payment options like tapping a debit card flashing your Apple Pay. Well, maybe you just don't want something documented. And this is my inner FUD showing here, but sometimes I don't like that my purchases all get itemized or possibly scrutinized. I'm not out buying hookers and blow that you know of. I just simply think that it's odd that everything that people buy these days is tracked. Now, I like to think that there are good ways to use gold directly, but it's a tough case to make. And it's a case that goldbacks are trying to make right now. It's intriguing, but I'm still feeling that one out. These get ripped on a lot, and I don't have a dog in the fight, but I have yet to find a retailer willing to take gold bullion for a transaction, but I found a few who will take gold backs. That's the use case. Now, we have to ignore the premium. We have to ignore the exchange rate just to get down to that single idea, and that's really tough to do unless somebody gives you some. Now, these gold backs, they were given to me. I was asked to kick them around. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm going to report back. The trailer there, though, is just that I'm trying to make some fun purchases with them. We'll be able to take a look then at what the true cost of having these as the unit of exchange was. So if I made a list of things that I wanted in a safe, well, the OP on Reddit, they had some of it. I mean, personally, I'm also going to have some gold of course, I'll probably have a little bit of silver. I'm going to have some fractional gold coins as well. I might even have these gold backs waiting there because, again, I'm working on that experiment. And earmuffs, I'm going to have a nano ledger in there. Oh, look at me acting like I have one single safe. If you're planning to rob me, you might be disappointed. So this isn't a case of what would you have in your safe if you had unlimited capital. This is a case of what I think are practical diversifications. The Reddit guy was flexing $50,000 in dollar bills in that photo. He was talking about having another hundred. So I would never consider holding $150,000 in dollar bills in a home safe. There are just lots of reasons. Now, maybe I'd have a few months of expenses in cash, and I do, and the rest in other stable assets. So I think I mentioned a cold wallet earlier. That is not stable. That's definitely speculation. But the kids these days see it as currency, so I would probably have a little bit of that too. Again looking for some of that conflict. Now, I'm just surprised that having a little bit of gold, we'll just say even a non-zero position, isn't a lot more common. So let's call it good there. Let us know what you'd have in your safe, hypothetically, if you had 50 or $150,000 in cash to play with. This should be interesting. Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, of course, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.